Hello and welcome. In our last segment, we were reminded of a rule we need to obey when we're solving inequalities. If we choose to multiply or divide by a negative value, we must reverse the inequality symbol. This rule doesn't apply with equations, of course, as the expressions in an equation are interchangeable, so there's no direction. Inequality statements have both direction and range. For example, if we solve this inequality by dividing by negative 1, our solution becomes the opposite of the original statement. We must flip the inequality sign for our solution to be true. In this episode, we'll dig a little deeper into relationships we encounter with inequality statements and how we can represent their solutions. As is often the case with learning, the more we explore, the more we discover. Our inequality statements give us a way to restrict or specify the desired set of numbers we wish to communicate. Let's look at a few more inequality relationships that you will encounter. We can often combine inequalities into a compound statement like this one. This would read as 2x plus 3 is greater than negative 1 and 2x plus 3 is less than 9. Compound inequalities can be solved as before. But we must do the same operation to all parts of the statement. You wouldn't see this with equations, as you can't have two equal signs in the same equation. Subtract 3 from all parts separated by inequality signs. Divide 2 in the same manner to get this statement, which we describe as x is greater than negative 2 and x is less than 3. Let's show our two solutions as graphs. The AND conjunction tells us to look for common values, which means overlap. This is referred to as the intersection of the two solutions. So, only the part of each number line that intersects is part of the solution. Here's the only place where the values are true for both inequality statements. Check this with 0, for example. 0 is both greater than negative 2 and less than 3. Any value 2 or less or 3 or more would not satisfy both inequalities and thus would not be part of the solution. In interval notation, we can summarize it like this. The symbol shown here denotes intersection. If we go back to the original compound inequality, we can efficiently restrict our solution to just the common values. This is still read as x is greater than negative 2 and x is less than 3, but just a more concise way to show the relationship and to show on a number line. This is referred to as an open interval, as the endpoints of the interval are open circles. In interval notation, we use parentheses. A closed interval would have endpoints that are included, and we use square brackets to identify this. One more intersection example to show the variations we can find with inequalities. And sometimes our two inequalities don't overlap. What do you think our solution would be for this case? If they don't intersect, there's no values that satisfy both statements. No values of x can be both greater than 2 and less than 0 at the same time. Our solution is said to be an empty set. Sometimes we want our solution to represent values from either inequality statement. We can use the conjunction OR to give us a union of values. For example, x is less than negative 1, or x is greater than or equal to 4. In a union statement, a value only has to meet the constraint of one or the other statement to be included. So any number less than negative 1, or greater than or equal to 4, becomes part of the solution. Notice values between the two endpoints don't work. 2, for example, is neither less than negative 1 nor greater than 4. Negative 1 also doesn't work. 4 is okay as it's true in the second statement. Note that this relationship can't be written as a compound statement, as x cannot be both less than negative 1 and greater than or equal to 4 at the same time. Because inequalities offer us so many different solution possibilities, we need to be able to understand and describe them. 
For information to be communicated effectively and clearly, there must be a common language. As we've learned, more advanced understanding perpetuates the need for more elaborate ways to share our findings. This is certainly something you've been discovering for years now, but civilizations have been working on this for centuries. Note how it looks like early Babylonians struggled with the abstract symbols for numbers, choosing instead to use nine objects to represent nine, for example. Common and efficient language is an evolving process. Sharing how inequalities intersect, don't intersect, or form unions are just a small sample of how math can be used to fulfill our need to communicate concepts. We will see this again with more complex inequalities.